we are now moving on to where possible doing internal corrections and of course uh, limb lengthening nails is one of the things but then doing a modular growth correction using a plate or plates is the other thing that we use we use condylar blade plates now and all those things to actually do the corrections internally but the power of external fixator yet remains when you have to cross the joints and when you have to cross the joint that is it is it is very versatile and uh, so this is like elizaro is the most versatile tool actually available and even though there has been a lot of advances in software correction um but if you have to use all deformities small feet elizaro fixator can actually be very versatile and flexible the principle of hinges and the principle that actually steve talked about is the main thing that you have, that anyone who is interested in deformity correction should understand it your basics of understanding of mechanical axis alignment joint alignment and segmental alignment properly in a person is very important but also in the joints remember that you have to have articular congruity and also ligament stability so these are the other two aspects go along with limb reconstruction so it's not just not using an external fixator or an internal fixator that is important now in the foot actually you have seven hinge principles which we use to correct a club foot and for example if you take a club foot if it is relapsed when they are young say they are from 4 year old to 10 year old we use this fixator just to do soft tissue distraction that is we just distract the soft tissues and the ligaments and correct the deformity now of course some can recur relapse after that and but when you have to correct them when they are at maturity this relapsed feet then we do a midfoot hind foot osteotomy and then correct it with an elizaro fixator or you can correct it acutely but then there is some shortening of the foot so various fixators that we have used uh, over time of course besides elizaro which is the backbone is a taylor special frame sheffield ring fixators uh, then mac fixator which is a multi axial uh, correction uh, in all planes and both from philadelphia actually chop uh, the chisson device the t gars fixator type uh, the hybrid fixators monolateral fixators and in monolateral i must say that actually orthofix fixator has been the greatest invention invention in actually monolateral fixators because their disc and ball joint locking with cam effect is one of the most robust so relapsed feet you have just very severe relapsed feet these were the days when actually uh, open uh, when uh, we used to do correction with soft tissue releases and this was very refractory to uh any kind of treatment because these used to get deformities which were not really along the joint planes and you have to then correct these deformities but distraction was the most important thing when you apply a fixator because if you don't distract when you apply the fixator before you start correcting a deformity you kind of crush the cartilage and the appositional growth and you get deformities in the feet and they get actually very problematic fixed uh severe pain when they are young adults so when you apply a fixator to these deformities you have to distract it because then you get the dis the distance and you can get the angulation corrected without compressing the joint so on the right side you can see the equinus correction you can put the hinges here and this is the motor and and one of the things which is most important is that you have to lock in the talus in the ankle joint and then you can move the whole foot around the around the uh, mobile acetabulum so that you don't dislocate or sublux the ankle joint otherwise the distraction forces can go through the ankle joint and cause problems yeah so taylor switch there was a time when actually uh, it became very popular that we should use taylor uh, special frame to correct these type of deformities this this is a neuromuscular foot and mitre and lobe and but these were the three frames actually that you could use for the foot and the software had the correction had to be reversed you had to do the reverse referencing that this means this became the reference ring actually for a foot but and you could correct it actually you could get all the corrections done but the problem always was that we had to then actually 
they had to go and modify and get extra shot and extra extra shot uh, struts for that. So this was therefore therefore there were some limits of the Taylor spatial frame correction. And whereas Elizardo frame, you can actually there's no limit really. Very small feet, you can get the hinges very close together and get distraction. And this is another example of low frame that we corrected. So you can see it can become quite bulky. But so there is two corrections here. One is at the midfoot level and this, and then this is the segmental correction at the hind foot. And you can make it hybrid with the Elizardo ring. So coming to multi-axial correction. Multi-axial correction was actually, again, bolting things together. So there was this uh, T fixator, gash fixator, which used to correct the blounts. Uh, uh, deformities, but then how would you correct the rotation and angulation in another plane? So you have to make bulky hinges. So that's what the chop people, uh, uh, Richardson from Ch uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, he devised. So this is one which is one hinge, and then you have the translational device here. And you bolt onto that, you have to make another ring to correct the rotations. So I did the course actually uh, in uh, in Sheffield, uh, teaching this type of fixator. But again, it was it was very bulky. You see that you have to if you have to correct the deformity of a club foot, you have to hold this segment there. You have to put a heel heel ring, and this is this is like a segmental correction, the hind foot. But then the midfoot correction has got to have components of rotation, supination, abduction, adduction correction, and this ring then moves. And this ring was very expensive. So this is the one which is corrected. This is an old, I mean, patient now studied the midfoot, hindfoot, osteotomy, percutaneous, and then corrected the whole uh, foot. But you can see this ring actually goes, moves, and corrects supination and pronation. Then you have to have these type of deformities, which is multi-axial rotational angulation correction in pseudo pseudo achondroplasia patient. So this is a halfway correction. We had put a stack fixator actually here of, of uh, uh, it was a, a Taylor special frame. Then we put Taylor special frame, and for the joint we put a hinge, which is a uh, 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 of hinge, and that was, that is the stack fixator. At the same time, you can get lang ang angulation lengthening, and that was correction on the right side. And the patient then went on to the correction on the left side. This is a Sheffield ring fixator. Sheffield ring fixator is good. One of the things about Sheffield ring fixator was it was it had this double ring stacked together, and uh, it was made of uh, car uh, later on made carbon fiber as well, so that you could do the X-rays. But it was very robust. And me Prof Sally had uh, done mechanical testing of these, so it was a very strong device for adult non-unions and segmental loss of. Uh, bone for adult patients, it was really very robust. Uh, it it uses more actually in the adults than in the children's uh, cases because it could hold things together. It could distract, compress and lengthen the leg with this modularity and you could cross the joint with the hinge. Smith and nephews actually kind of modified this and copied this principle from that, but orthofix had it beforehand. And this is the stack with long fractures. You could treat it with different kind of foot frame, you can lock it in, you can do percutaneous internal fixation, and then and then actually uh, make the patient walk on it. I can't run the video at the moment. This was a gash type of fixator, which uh, Grant also used when I was in New York Limb Reconstruction Institute. Uh, this is the hinge there, actually, you could correct the blonde disease in one plane. And this is called banana correction. Actually, we won't go into the principle of banana correction, but uh, but this is a very interesting thing because if you can get the oblique plane, as uh, Steve Giles said, you can get the oblique plane, then you have to actually do the osteotomy in an oblique plane and you can angulate the osteotomy in such a way that you can get the rotation, angulation in all planes corrected together. And that is... That is a principle, and actually, uh, John Hasenberg had, uh, had uh, with an with engineer, uh, he had devised a uh, Pythagoras, uh, not a Pythagoras, a trigonometric formula of how to angulate your Elizabeth hinges actually in another plane to correct the 
rotation as well when you angulate the hinges. So that principle actually was the, was shown by Vananda by, uh, by the surgeon called Sacramento George. What is his name? Uh, forget. But this is a very elegant thing actually to learn. And this is a typical Blanche disease. After correction, you can use the gas fixator and we corrected it and it was straight. This is an infected malunion with multiple deformities. The, remember the biology and the bone quality. And remember the axis, if it falls, if the bisector line falls outside this, you could do bifocal, but in some cases you can do unifocal. And uh, so this is the type of correction with Elizaro hybrid fixators. So this is a bifocal correction of that. Multiple scarred tissue. So in these cases, actually, when you do internal fixations, you can run into big problems of infection and you can lose the leg. So there, this, therefore, external fixator is really useful in these cases where the soft tissue cover is not good. Of course, you, we have used it for several things. For short uh, uh, metatarsals, we have used uh, these type of fixators. Even for metacarpals, we have used um, acumen type. So the, one of the other things is that we continue to use this procallus articulated hip distraction here. And we are perhaps the largest user in, uh, in, in Britain, if not in Europe. And this is a very versatile tool, actually, in cases of AVN for different reasons. Or uh, in the in the Perthes cases, in post slip upper femoral epiphysis AVN, or even in young adults AVN, or if you have to stabilize the joint for some reason. Recently, I had actually a very interesting case of a patient who just woke up. He is actually 56, 60 year old, you know, 58 year old, who woke up and he just fell down and he dislocated his hip, his normal hip. And then he went to the hospital and this was about four months ago, five months ago, and they did a COVID swab as because of his uh, protocol for admission and they found he was COVID positive. But they could not retain his hip in. He had developed actually transverse myelitis type of picture and he had developed a neuropathic joint with no position sense and he kept dislocating his hip. There was no dysplasia. And I don't have his pictures actually, but I stabilized it with the hinge distractor. So, so it's a powerful tool. Although we tried a Biomet one, but we found that actually we went back to Orthofix, which is a very, very good uh, device for this. The same principle of distraction you can use in avian in talus. I've got this patient actually who's now coming to 10 year follow up where I actually distracted it and drilled, of course, retrograde. And, and he remained not collapsed. So this is just a touch actually on, on, on the things. But what I need to say, I mean, I'll go on to the precise name because, uh, because uh, Steve said that actually uh, about it. But the main thing is that we are using more and more of internal fixation and where possible uh, because of the ease for the patients. And we've got better devices now. I mean, this is a case like, for example, of deformity and shortening because there was this multi intraarticular fracture and the patient developed growth arrest. So we kind of planned it on trauma care. And it is important to show this because the limitations of lengthening proximally. And you, okay, you lengthen it and you straighten it. But what happens is that when you do an anatomical correction, lengthening on the nail is anatomical correction and you can get more valgus. In this case, this joint was so bad that we did not want to go distally. But I would have... Nowadays, we're doing lots actually from distal one because we have got a lot of play here to correct and do reverse planning because we could put the <coughs> screws, the polar screws to then correct the deformity itself and get the joint line correct. So purposely, I put this one to show that the limitations of uh, lengthening over a nail, precise nail. And of course, this is a X-linked hypophosphatemic rickets. You have to do an arthrogram to just see the joints. And you can use the eight plates to correct. But what happens here? This is another limitation. That's why I'm putting these cases as against the other cases is because although you get the joint lines uh, parallel, but you get you have a deformity here. Zigzag deformity. So the cases of hypophosphatemic rickets, if they are very severely bored, may not be the ones best actually with only this type of correction of modular correction. 
So uh, without taking any more time, actually, I will uh, stop here. Uh, and because the most exciting session is going to come with case discussions, actually. So thank you for having me.